Hey guys, what is up? It is Beast of Prestige and welcome back to episode 5 of Building Prestige Heights in Planet Coaster. I'm very happy that I can make this video. Actually, almost half of my footage was corrupted, but I managed to actually save it, uh, basically recover it uh, using VLC Media Player and recording it from the player. So, I hope there's not a lot of uh, quality loss. Uh, you will see some difference probably between the couple of shots and some weird uh, jump cuts where actually I wasn't able to retrieve the, the original file, so I just skipped that. But other than that, I hope you guys gonna enjoy this. So let's get into yeah, let's let's get into it. Now, basically, last episode we built the coaster, and we don't really have a name for it yet. If you do come up with a cool, well, we've got some cool names like Poseidon or um, you know something like that. Um, I'm not really sure. There's not really, you know, it's kind of a modern theme, so a modern name would totally suit it, but I have no idea for a name. So if you want to come up with a cool name, maybe, uh, you know, just put it in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Anyhow, um, basically after we built the coaster, I wanted to build the last building in the entrance area, the entrance plaza pretty much. And that's the building that you actually see in front of the coaster, that the coaster towers above. And that was what I was talking about in the previous episodes, you know, I want to have this, you know, this really... Not really intense, but it's it's impressive basically. You, you just walk into the park and you see this giant thing and you're like, holy shit, this is awesome. And <laughs> that's what I was trying to achieve here. So, you know, I decided to make a pretty wide building uh, with a lot of, you know, repetition. So these, um, these wooden piles right here that you can see, the poles, um, they have actually kind of the same layout as the uh, poles in the restaurant building that I first built in the first episode. But basically, it's <laughs> it's a very simple building. The top floor is a little bit different. I didn't want it to look all the same uh, because then it would just become this giant Lego block that you just plop down and it's not cool. So there are some you know some details in it. I'm trying to step up my details, uh, trying to you know work with the game a little bit, you know, to, tr to practice and you know as much as possible basically. But I don't have a lot of time, so I can't really do that much. Um, so yeah, <laughs> basically. This um, thing is going to be two stories tall, so there's basically the bottom floor, the ground level, and there's the first floor, and the first floor is of course not uh, accessible. There's no stairs in the game, I really miss the stairs. You can make stairs with the, uh, well basically with the scenery that's in here. Uh, you can place things on top of each other a little bit, um, behind each other basically, and then that kind of turns into stairs. Uh, so it looks kind of good, but it isn't at all useful. Yeah, it doesn't work. And basically that's the only thing that I want this park to do. I want this park to operate like a normal theme park. And that means that all the stalls are going to be connected. Every building will have kind of a use. And <laughs> that means that I will have restaurants, uh, bathrooms, that's about it. Um, <laughs> and of course some stores and some souvenir shops and that kind of stuff. Uh, but every single building will have sort of a use. And that's really what I find important. I don't, I'm not trying to create like a realistic city or a realistic village or... Um, you know, the awesome temples that I've seen or in actually like every every special building where people pay extra attention to make it as realistic as possible, like you're actually walking in in such a village. I'm not really trying to recreate that because when you're walking in a theme park, you don't really walk in such a realistic setting. Of course, if you're walking in Disneyland, I suppose you are, and some parks are really, really themed. Uh, but I'm trying to make kind of a mix about uh, between like you know, some some parks like Cedar Point or uh, Wally -E World, which have you know mostly just thrill rides, but also trying to incorporate some kind of theme that it you know has this ambience, but it also got to be a thrill, a thrill zone basically for thrill seekers, uh, because that's what I love. I love roller coasters, and I love playing games with roller coasters. I love designing them. Um, yeah, I just <laughs> I love Planet Coaster. So this building is almost complete, but I felt like you know. At a certain moment, there were some things missing. I actually placed these like um, these things on top of the windows. They look pretty cool. But uh, basically, I thought like, well, there's some things missing, so I tried to put some more of those lanterns down, and I actually misplaced them totally. Normally, like in isometric view in the old roller coaster, you place like a wall at a certain height, and then you turn around with the camera, and you see that the wall is actually like uh, three blocks above the ground because you misplaced it. And that's very annoying when building buildings, but it's basically also the same in uh, perspective 3D views. Sometimes you still have that problem, and I had that right there with the little lanterns. Uh, but basically finishing up this building, I put some foliage on the side so that you can't really see the planes behind the buildings, uh, the like giant grasslands. And also in the end I decided to put some large trees behind the building. You'll see that all the way in the end of the episode. 
Uh, but that's just that, you know, the more you place behind the building and it's taller and it's realistic, basically, um, the taller the coaster seems to be. And that's really... The coaster isn't really that tall, but it does kind of feel like it when you're in the peeps perspective and you're looking at a building, and behind the buildings there's some big trees, and behind those big trees is a big coaster, then you think like, holy crap, the thing is big, while well, actually it's only like 35 meters. So that's really, you know, where I'm going with is how can I draw as much attention to important objects such as coasters, you know, the lift of coasters, um, for the guests. Of course, the guests in the game don't really know this and they don't notice. Um, but, you know, if this was a real park, I'm, I'm trying to uh, think of things to draw people to the certain areas they want to go. And that's something pretty important. Now, you know, in theme parks, you always have these like little rides between, in between basically the areas and also like in the areas. And this one is right on the edge between the modern and the, um, like the entrance area. And I really like this. This flat ride is in fact the smallest flat ride there is in the game, if I'm correct. Uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But I thought this was the smallest one. And I really like the fact that it's, you know, it's kind of cute. It's a kiddie ride, basically. Um, and you can just place it, you know, as a transition between two areas. And it's it works out really nice, you know, with the walls around it. And I put some uh, lights on the walls later. And that's kind of the same as I did with the octopus ride, only then I did it on the barrels. But I think in the end, the lighting of this thing looks very good. You can see it at night right here. It actually turns night. And I'm really happy with the way this park is, you know, is looking right now. Uh, I can't wait for the next episode. I hope you guys are psyched too. And yeah, that's that's basically it for today. So I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Peace from Pieces of Prestige.